this place is honestly insane. Like coming from Australia, like we don't even get snow, let alone like these mountains and everything like that. It's just crazy. What's up guys? I'm actually in Switzerland at the moment and I'm in the Swiss Alps in a really beautiful little town called Verbia. Um, I was like updating my story, like my Instagram and stuff when I got here in the past few days and um, one of my really close friends, he inboxed me and he was like, dude, I'm so happy for you, like you're absolutely killing it. It's amazing like how far you've come and all this stuff and kind of made me realize this is what I've been working towards for like the last six years and I've been working so hard, like non-stop. I haven't really stopped to like appreciate the fact that I've kind of made it to where I wanted to be. So it's been a pretty crazy journey from the start. Man, there's so much to it. Um, even though I'm kind of like where I want to be or where I wanted to be in terms of like becoming full-time as a creative, I know there's a lot of other people out there who, you know, still might be in the beginning stages or it's still their dream, you know, to, to take their creative passion and turn it into a full-time job. So while I'm like pretty happy with where I'm at at the moment, um, you know, I realize that I can actually help those people because I've gone through it, like I've been through this before. I started from nothing basically, um, and I know a lot of people out there as well are starting from nothing right now. So I think I have a lot of, you know, advice to offer. So that's kind of what today's video is all about. So this video is kind of for people who are either just starting out or they've been in the game for a little while and they just don't know like the next step. They might be like part-time um, or you know, just doing it as a hobby. So I'm gonna share with you guys my top five tips uh, for turning full-time as a creative. So while it is a beautiful day outside, it is just far too cold to film that day. I think it's like negative six, negative seven degrees. Um, and I like my hand was just shaking trying to hold the camera um, So we've moved inside now and we're gonna get into my top five tips for making it as a full-time creative full-time filmmaker or Photographer, whatever it is that you're into So everyone's journey as a filmmaker is going to be slightly different, but mine started out how many others do um, Just doing filmmaking and photography as a hobby um, something to do out of boredom. Basically, my parents wanted me to go to university and get an education um, so that I could get a good, uh, high-paying, full-time job. Um, but really, I wasn't too into that idea. Um, I wanted to be creative. I wanted to you know, do things that I was passionate about. Um, so out of school, you know, I did attend university. I did study film for a little while there, um, but really I wanted to make it on my own. I uh, wanted to, you know, start my own production company, um, that kind of thing. So that was kind of my goal from the beginning. So I started making videos for friends, like music videos. Um, I shot a couple of small concerts in my hometown, um, you know, just little personal projects like filming skateboarding, things like that. Um, just for no money in the beginning. So what these little projects did for me is they helped me learn the skills to become like a decent filmmaker and photographer. It was essentially learning by doing. Um, the other thing as well is because I was posting all these little projects on social media, um, showing my friends and family and things like that, um, in that kind of circle of, of people, I became known as the video guy, um, which was actually really advantageous in the beginning. That brings me to my first tip which is that you need to be prolific. And what that means is that in the beginning at least, you need to be doing as many projects, saying yes to as many opportunities as possible in order to get your work out there and generate word of mouth. Essentially, you need to become the photography guy or girl, videography guy or girl, um, whatever it is that you're passionate about creating, you need to become that person um, amongst your social circle. And what that's gonna do is, that's gonna make you come up in conversations when people are talking about opportunities or things that they need done that you know might concern like your field of expertise you're going to be coming up in those conversations and eventually it's going to lead to you getting a job or two after a period of time one or two jobs are going to present themselves and they're actually going to be paid opportunities and that actually happened for me in the beginning a friend came to me and he said you know hey you're that video guy i've seen your work around um 
my sister's actually getting married next month and it would be cool if you could make a video for her. And basically that was just my start into the world of making wedding videos. So my second tip is to under promise and over deliver with every single client. For every opportunity that you get, you need to be going above and beyond for that client to really surprise and delight them at every opportunity that you can get. At this stage, it's really easy to afford, you know, spending an extra one or two hours to make that project extra special, add an extra edit onto it, an extra minute onto your deliverable, add extra photos, um, even spending extra time shooting. You can really afford to go that extra mile in order to please your client. So even if you can't over deliver or give something extra uh, on a particular job, even buying a small gift for your client, um, just as a token of gratitude to them for hiring you, will really help to separate you from the rest of the market. And just that small gesture alone will help you to get more jobs in the future um, and your word of mouth is gonna be a lot stronger with that client. They'll remember you for longer and they will definitely recommend you more often. My third tip is to get a testimonial from each and every client. Testimonials are huge. At first I thought it was a little bit cliche, a little bit cringy, you know, to use testimonials, but I decided to give it a shot. I put a couple on my site and it made a massive difference. I learned very early on that one of the biggest things holding potential clients back from hiring you is not quite having the confidence in your ability to deliver exactly what they're after. So putting testimonials up on your social media or on your website will really help your potential clients to like overcome that barrier of, you know, not exactly knowing, you know, if you're going to do a good job or not. The fact that they can just see that other people have used you and, you know, enjoyed using you, enjoyed interacting with you. And, and at the end of that experience also got a really good product um, from you that really helps to eliminate those barriers in their mind. Overcoming objections uh, from clients is one of the biggest things that you can learn um, when moving into like creative industries and um, selling yourself, you know, as a videographer or a photographer, uh, but we'll probably go into that more in detail in another video. So just a little bonus tip. Um, if you can use testimonials that actually complement each other on your website, it actually really makes a massive difference. So basically what I mean is that if you have one testimonial that talks about maybe how reliable you were um, on the day of the filming, um, another one that talks about how easy it was to work with you and how quickly that you turned around the product, and maybe a third one about, you know, just the quality of the product itself, um, using those testimonials that complement each other one after the other um, can really, you know, help the client to see like a well-rounded picture of why they should hire you for that job. So my fourth tip is to get a mentor. And that can come in many different shapes and sizes. You can have like one person who's been through the journey before and they can show you the way, um, help you get past certain stages in your journey. Um, you can have like a group of people, like a Facebook group or a community that you're a part of. Um, or you can even just get a job. And that might sound really funny, but I remember in the beginning, um, I got a kind of semi-part-time, casual kind of contractor role um, in another company. And what that actually helped me to do was not only to make like mistakes and, um, you know, muck some things up where it wasn't necessarily coming back on me, you know, just small mistakes that, um, you know, were really valuable that I'm glad I didn't make um, on my own so that they weren't a reflection on my own business. Um, but also, you know, um, learning the inner workings of an actual functioning company with real clients paying real money for actual products. Um, that experience, going through that experience and learning um, all those, uh, you know, processes and all those kinds of things was really valuable for me. So even if you could get a job, it doesn't have to be like a long-term thing. You can stay there for a couple of months, maybe a couple of years, just until you learn the skills that you need to learn and also just get familiar with being in the industry and around people who are actually in that industry. So my fifth tip is massive. And this is actually one of the things I see holding back a lot of creators. And that is that they fail to reinvest in their craft. So you need to be reinvesting in your craft and that comes in many different forms. Um, most people will think of it as like buying more camera equipment. And while that is true, you need to like up your equipment, you know, you know, adding pieces of gear that will really help to elevate your production quality. That is important. But I mean, also things like educating yourself in terms of like, how do I run a business? How do I build a website? You know, how do I run my social media properly? Um, as well as like investing in education around your actual craft itself. So I would have bought like, you know, so many courses in the five years that I've been doing this that I've completely lost count. 
um, courses on, you know, general videography and photography and then courses that are like really specific to my actual niche, what I'm trying to focus on. Um, so reinvesting in your craft is massive. And the more that you can afford to do that, the better. Um, that should be like almost your number one priority when it comes to building your business as a creative. So going beyond these five tips, obviously there is so much more that you need to know in order to build a successful business as a creative, becoming a freelancer or becoming a specialist, things like that, um, that we can definitely touch on in future videos. So if you wanna see more content like this, please make sure you subscribe. If this video helped you out in any way, um, leave a like, that means a lot. So yeah, thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. See ya.